Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in this video we're going to be going over the events that happened in 2020. Basically all of the major events that happened in War Thunder that were able to give out vehicles, whether it was for free or whether it was through grinding, and also, you know, covering some of the ideas that happened there, giving my thoughts in general on some of these events, looking towards the future as well. There was a ton of events in 2020. It felt like there wasn't a time where there wasn't something happening in War Thunder, whether it was an event, whether it was a competition, whether it was a new update. 2020 was jam-packed when it came to different things happening, and I'm pretty sure when it came to 2020, this was the year that more events happened than any other. To give you a general idea of what we're going to be covering in this video, there were 28 vehicles uh, that you were able to grind out in these events, and also 18, 18 of those were premiums and 10 of those were event vehicles so a ton of stuff that you were able to get to get for free over the 2020 period at the same time as well there are there were a ton of events that were on offer which gave out these vehicles and also unique stuff as well uh, when we look at them there were 10 events over the year which uh, these could be found in so overall there was just a ton of stuff going on and this and in this video I'm not going to cover like the individual uh, sales events, stuff like the T-34 prototype, the German Sherman that came back, and also the KV-1E. Um, those will probably be talked about later on. But mainly we're going to look at stuff of the major events uh, that happened in War Thunder that gave out vehicles. The first event to have a look at is uh, started on the 24th of January 2020. And by the way, if you want links to any of these in the description, I'll make sure to put them there so you can have a look for yourself at the events and uh, what happened in them. I did participate in all of the events uh, when it came to uh, War Thunder, so yeah, that's basically the basis of where I'm coming from. The first one, as I said, was from the 24th of January 2020, and it was World War Season attack from the sea. This was technically season two of World War Mode after having the one the previous year, and it was probably the best season of World War Mode when it comes to the general mechanics that were involved and the, I suppose, uh, fun that at least I had when it came to World War Mode. One of the things I'm not including in this list is the festive event of 2020 because technically it started in 2019, so we'll leave it there. But when it came from, uh, when it came to Attack from the Sea, Attack from the Sea had four scenarios. It had the Battle of Luzon, Kirk Eltigan operation, and then two from the previous World War mode as well, the Battle of Khan and also Nordwind. And I thought it was a good idea to bring back Khan and also Nordwind since those, those were two of the more balanced ones when it came to uh, the first season. And then they got even more rebalancing during the season. And then Kirk Eltigan operation and also the Battle of Luzon. The Battle of Luzon was very unbalanced uh, when it came to its first iteration and uh, same with Kirk Eltigan but by the end they were pretty balanced and uh, generally worked very well. The reason why this was my favorite season of World War Mode is because it mixed a lot of cool factors. It mixed the naval elements, it mixed the ground elements, it mixed the aviation elements, something that I personally have been looking forward to for a long time when it comes to War Thunder, the idea of a combined arms area and that's what World War Mode gave me, and it meant that it was very fun to play through. You know, we had a great time in Tech ES uh, playing a lot of the missions and having a lot of fun, and I would definitely like to do it again. The other thing was the prizes that you got from them were absolutely great. We got the BA-11, which of course is the uh, Rank 1 Premium Armored Car uh, from the uh, Soviets. Uh, the BA-11, or the BA series in general, is one that I've personally been looking forward to for a long time when it comes to War Thunder, and in-game it is just really nice to have it. And the second one was the USS Phelps, and the USS Phelps obviously being one of those <clears throat> machines uh, when it comes to uh, American uh, ships, which is very deadly, uh, you know, very fast firing 127 millimeters, a lot of AA guns on it as well, and a lot of torpedoes. It fit really well into the lineups uh, that you could find at rank three at the time for naval. <clears throat> the stuff like the Porter, the Sumner, and the Somers 
greatly benefited from the USS Phelps uh, existing. And also, one of the things that I really like about World War Mode is you got specific decals for participating in each of the battles. You know, the decal of the Kirk Eltigan operation and the Battle of Luzon um, decal. I think that's just really nice uh, so you can, you know, remember a part of what would be seen as War Thunder history. I've always liked how they're able to do that. So, yeah, it was a pretty fun experience. The fact that, you know, you had all of the awards and if you were doing, you know, the uh, stars, if you were playing with your squadron, they made it easy easier to get the stars so therefore there was a reason to play with your squadron instead of just the competitive angle overall it was just a great time and uh, i really really enjoyed that and hopefully we get something similar when it comes to this year the next one was the space race event now the space race event was obviously the object 279 uh, the space race event was a builder bear event uh, meaning that you had to just basically play the game and then over time accrue parts and then put those parts together to be able to you know make the vehicles now generally these events are quite easy to do but they have fundamental flaws in them the first fundamental flaw with the space race event was that it was announced on the 1st of April and it started on the 1st of April. Uh, so there was no prior warning for people when it came to this event. This was a problem with World War um, Attack from the Sea as well. Um, it was announced on the 24th and then it was started on the 28th. So you basically had four days to prepare without even knowing any of the maps. And when it comes to the space race event, uh, you had, uh, well, an even worse issue. The fact that you had a timed event, which went for uh, basically 14 days, and it was only announced on the first day that it started happening, it became a big issue uh, to actually, you know, get make sure that people had the information required to be able to put it together. The other major issue with these events, uh, which I'm sure will continue into this year, even though I vehemently detest test it is the fact that you were only able to create two of the vehicles this event in it had the object 279 the au1 corsair the sdkfc 2341 and also the sgb s309 the gray goose all of these vehicles are fun in their own right all of them are you know really uh, have their like unique play styles and one of the the major issues as i said with the event if you just play through the event and you know get everything like max maximize everything you can you weren't able to get everything you were at most able to get two maybe three vehicles if you got lucky when it came to rare, rare drops but you weren't able to get all four vehicles and this is why i don't like the builder bear events they are specifically designed so you cannot get everything out of them and that to me is wrong uh, especially when it comes to the uh, when it comes to at least uh, the game itself you know I, I like the fact that if you put in enough effort even if that effort is seen as a ridiculous amount you still should be able to get everything from an event and unfortunately that was just not the case with this one if you wanted to get everything you would have to use the market on PC or you would have to uh, put in GE for the console and for me personally that's not okay um, the fact that there wasn't just a way to solely grind this stuff is is uh, incredibly wrong and incredibly annoying. When it comes to the workshop side of things though, the general theme of the event of creating rockets to go to the moon to bring back parts of vehicles, I mean it's quite ingenious and uh, the, the theme was pretty cool. That was quite nice, and they also tied it in with a space event that was going on at the time, which was the April Fool's event, and you played that event to be able to get either parts or the camouflages, the black camouflages for the vehicles, and that was also pretty interesting. Uh, the camouflages themselves, um, I believe they were only set to like semi-historical, or they were set to non-fictional at one point, and that meant that you would have black Object 279s running around that was a little bit rough um, looking at the vehicles themselves the object 279 came in at 8.3 and it very quickly went to 8.7 
Turns out that there was a lot of machines at 7377 that just couldn't do anything against this, even at 83. I was spading the Chieftain Mark V at the time uh, when I was playing uh, against the Object 279. It's very hard to frontally pen that thing if you don't have APFS DS or if you don't have specific heat. From the side, though, uh, the side of the turret is very, very weak, um, so it was kind of easy to go through that before the volumetric armor changes. Now, it's very hard to deal with. The Object 279 is a very good vehicle. Um, it struggles against, as I said, APFS DS, but everything else it does pretty well against. The AU-1 Corsair is a fat Corsair, which can carry a ton of bombs, and uh, it's very good in ground realistic, pretty fun little vehicle, um, and I would say definitely was worth it if you were able to get it. The STKFC-2341 is obviously the uh, Puma, but with the 20mm. And uh, I think that was the last of the 234s that uh, are the major modifications that we didn't have in the game. Now that we have it, it's also really nice to see. And then the SGB S309, the Grey Goose, was a nice addition as well to the naval lineup for the British. So the event vehicles were good. The event itself had its issues. Then we had Victory Day. So generally when it comes to Victory Day, um, you normally get like a little sale or something. But this year, we actually got some vehicles. And uh, this was from the 8th of May to the 11th of May. So it was over a weekend and basically what you had to do was was complete some tasks and you got access to three premium vehicles you got the lvt a4 for the us so the lvt with the uh, short 75 millimeter uh, then the swordfish mark ii for the british uh, which was a, a modification that could carry rp3 rockets and then also the g5 tka 106 which is of course the g5 motor torpedo boats but it could carry rockets as well in a similar amount to the katusha so overall uh, it was just really nice to have this little event and over the weekend it was just like a challenge event so you just had to complete a few tasks and the tasks themselves were not that hard to get and just to get these nice little things for victory day was really good um i like this event the these are generally the events i like the most um you know they're just little events here and there which give you little premium vehicles i think those are, are really nice so I'm happy that that um, was there. And then we had the worst event of the year. Um, after that, this started on the 30th of June, 2020. Um, it was before Operation Summer, and it was World War uh, Road to the West. Now, Road to the West was... It, it was mired with so many issues, uh, was Road to the West. Basically, the first one is that it was announced on the 30th of June, and uh or i believe it was announced slightly before then and it started on the first of july and because of the fact that it started so quickly i believe two weeks before its initial announcement this basically meant that you had two weeks to be able to research all of top tier aviation for the soviets all top tier aviation for the americans and all top tier aviation for germany and also the ground vehicles and helicopters if you could so instead of it actually being a season where it was about you know the at least for me uh, about the actual maps it was just more about um did we actually have the vehicles so we could you know actually play the game instead of just getting annihilated by an individuals and because of this because of the fact that you know that uh, basically a lot of people in the squadron didn't have high tiers of certain nations it just ended up being a very bad experience for a lot of people and i felt very bad for individuals who were playing it because it just it, it was not fun for them and it wasn't fun for me too seeing people struggle in these lesser vehicles against the better vehicles of the enemy it didn't it wasn't a tactical you know operation it wasn't anything like that it was just did you have the vehicles no well you're just going to get annihilated like that's basically it and it was very 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 annoying playing stuff like the amx 13 versus stuff such as t-55s 
uh, stuff that you and T62, stuff that you couldn't pen at all uh, from the front. So you just died. And yeah, it was just, it was a very bad experience. And also they added in the helicopter mechanic for the Battle of the Chinese Farm and the Battle for the Fulder Gap. This is one of the most broken mechanics they've ever added to a World War mode. And uh, it meant that, especially on the Fulder Gap on the early versions, you could end the operation in about five minutes and there was nothing the enemy team could do about it. Same uh, with Chinese Farm, depending on what side uh, you you, you put in um, they these scenarios that they that they gave these old history scenarios of you know if uh, the USSR crossed the Fulda Gap they were absolutely awful the whole thing was just not good um, it just didn't work properly and it was just an absolute pain to be able to get together if they ever do a modern day or if they ever do a high tier world war mode again I'm not playing with the squadron it's as simple as that, because I do not want to have this experience again. It was a terrible experience for everybody involved, and I don't want, you know, to be a part of that. And it's, as I said, it's not the fault of the squadron, it was the fault of Gaijin. And that is, at least in my opinion, the problem. The other thing was, uh, this event kept getting postponed. A bunch of it was postponed the first week because they had massive server issues when it came to the event itself. So even when you couldn't, even though when you set up to play, when we were ready to play, guess what happened? The, the servers were broken. So we ended up in a scenario where everyone was ready to go and then nothing happened because everything was broken. And... That meant that a lot of the operations were postponed. That meant that a lot of people were just disinterested from the start because, you know, it basically uh, because uh, we'd been blown off like three or four times when it came to uh, the, the scenario itself. So there was just a lot of bad things with this event. And I believe it also just came out after an update. And that meant that, you know, people were busy grinding other things. The vehicles that were on offer as well were not exactly grand. The IL-2 M2 M82, which is of course the IL-2 with the M82 uh, engine, I think this was a nice one. You know, it's a, it's a unique vehicle and uh, nice to see for the USSR. And then the M60 AMBT. Uh, the M60 AMBT caused a lot of matchmaking issues when it came to the high echelons of the game. The basic reason is, is because of the fact that it had a very weak round stock and it, and also it's a huge target it's an m60 and i believe it was put in at like a 10 or 10 10 3 and it just got annihilated for the first week or so until it went down in br the m60 was pretty good when it was fully spaded but the problem is when you put it as an event vehicle people are just going to get beaten up over and over and over again until they get those modifications especially if people realize that it's quite easy to beat up then you get a lot of the high tier players who will just play other nations to play against this thing and make sure it has a very low win rate and that means that it annihilates all of the statistics around that area um, when it comes to you know balancing the game and it just creates a big issue with the game in general which is why i don't really like um you know high tier premiums the uh, high tier event vehicles i should say the next one was operation summer this started on the 7th of august and it nearly went the month it went to the end of the 31st of august and generally this was a good event um this was another challenge event so you just had to complete challenges every few days and you got, you know, awards out of it. What was nice about this event is uh, minor nations were prioritized a little bit. It seems like they've cracked the code on how to do these events now. Basically, the minor nations, uh, basically the nations which aren't US, Germany and USSR, um, you give them the uh, starter premiums, basically, you know, the, the early challenge premiums, and then you give the event vehicles, which the higher tier rewards to those major nations that seems to be the way to go and it's the best way of getting people into those other nations so uh yeah the challenges were not too hard uh, the, i believe this was the first event where they actually made the tanker star just destroy 50 enemies 
um, and because of that, uh, because of that, it was uh, one of those one of those things that was highly talked about. Because before, at least in RB and SB, it was uh, you only had to kill twenty five enemies. To be honest, it wasn't too much of a big change, at least for me. I don't think it was a a huge thing. Um, if they'd made it for aircraft that you had to destroy forty enemies in RB, then yes, it would have been. But tanks generally, uh, if you're getting twenty enemy kills, you're normally at the stage of winning. 14 battles or you're at the stage of you know getting allied uh, allied assists and things like that so uh, I, I didn't think it was too much of a, of a problem they also had a bunch of coupons uh, for mythical creatures and also weapons decorations um, one of the problems with these challenge events, um, I'd, I would say the major problem with these challenge events and it's happening with the current one that's going on right now is the fact that you can get duplicates of the decorations and also of the decals. And this basically means that you have a situation where you can get three or four of the same decal, and it means you are forced to use the gadget market to be able to get the sets. And since they've added in the collections this year, um, which means that if you get all the collections, you get a unique thing, uh, such as a decal or a decoration, it forces people more to use stuff like the gadget market. So in my opinion, I don't like that. I really don't. I, I would much prefer you didn't get duplicates of decals um, because there will be some which are more rare than others. Therefore, you will be forced to spend money. I would rather it not be like that just from a consumer point of view. But yeah, uh, we'll see what happens in the future. The vehicles that were on offer were the AR196A3, um, a really cool German uh, little uh, seaplane. Uh, really happy that that finally made it into the game. The IFV-73 for Sweden, which is very close to one of the uh, vehicles which is already in uh, the Swedish tech tree, so it basically meant that you could bolster a lineup with uh, what was a backup, which was premium, which was nice. And then the Freccia. Now, the Freccia being a Ital Italy premium, which was a pretty good vehicle. Turns out two rapid fire 40s are very good against other PT boats um, and also battle boats. I would generally say the Freccia, though, um, isn't any more dangerous than, let's say, something like the Albatross, which also exists, and also some of the high tier USSR uh, boats as well. Overall, it's nice that the Freccia got added because it meant that more people got involved in the Italian tree and gave it a go. And I'm happy about that uh, since it was the new tree at the time you know, uh, that was released. The top tier event vehicles were the C2A1 Mexus, uh, the Leopard, and this is just a fat Leopard with uh, access to extra, um, extra heat FS protection. And overall, I think this was a good addition. Um, bolstering that 9-0 lineup, the, uh, the C2 did uh, really well, and it's a, it's a solid vehicle to have. <clears throat> uh, even when stock, uh, once you get past like that heat FS grind, once you get the thermals and the APFS DS, it is very combat effective. Then you also had the F11 F1 Tiger, uh, which uh, is a 90 for some reason. It is a way better plane uh, than a 90 vehicle, and uh, it has access to just some crazy weaponry. Has access to an afterburner, can go supersonic. You know, it has a lot of bells and whistles to it. The F11 F1, and uh, it's just kind of sad that um, just kind of sad that it's sat there at 90. Um, even though it definitely shouldn't be. And then you've also got the Maxim Gorky, which is a decent um, cruiser uh, when it comes to the USSR and also would get more people involved in that tech tree. So overall positive. The camouflages as well that were on offer, uh, I thought were really nice, especially the Blue Angel skin for the F11 F1. Uh, that was really nice to see as well. One note to say about this um, Operation Summer, which I believe is an issue that's been fixed now, but one of the problems that people ran into uh, was the fact that with stuff like the F11 F1 specifically, and also the Mexus, 
Well, they uh, when it comes to these events, they give them to content creators, um, at least test drives, uh, before they're available to the public. Uh, the reason to do this is so content creators like myself can make content around them and have a look at the vehicles and see if they're worth it or if they're not worth it. You know, basically give you our opinions on it. And one of the problems is they seem to take that information um, from <laughs> from uh, from us because there was an economy update just after um, when the F11 F1 got introduced into the game and its repair cost went up to a ridiculous amount uh, even when stock so for me personally this was a problem because obviously you know if you just get a new vehicle you're looking forward to it and then you find out its repair cost is through the roof like what are you supposed to do you know you you just kind of sit there and just kind of get sad so i think um the fact that they changed that later on in the year so event vehicles wouldn't get affected by that stuff i think that was really good um and uh, at the time though it was definitely an issue uh, that was solved the idea of taking content creator statistics you know people who play the game probably a lot more than the average person uh, and using them as a baseline for repair costs or rewards is not a good idea and that event proved it the next event was the tank biathlon and sea biathlon uh, this was a way that you could get vehicle camos uh, for either high tier ships or high tier uh, tanks and even though there was just one tank uh, you had to use for this you know basically for the tank biathlon you know you had uh, three options you could take the t-72b3 the tadu or the ztz96a but if you didn't take the tadu you're at an inherent disadvantage so it was always correct to take the tatu even though i did win a game uh, with the ZT said 96A, which was the only game I actually played with that machine. Um, <laughs> and it's actually up on the YouTube channel uh, if you want to have a look at it. Um, but yeah, the, the TADU uh, was the way to go. So the fact that they added in a thing where if you win a battle, you know, you would get rewards, but if you took part, you didn't really get anything, then that, that was a bit of a problem. Uh, they had 40 camouflages um, for, you know, different vehicles. So 10 vehicles had four separate camouflages to them. And then in the Sea Biathlon, there were six camouflages that you could get as well. And overall, this was a really nice event. It was a nice change of pace uh, compared to General War Thunder. There was a few issues uh, with what our class as desync or class as maybe bugs, especially in the firing range parts, where if you fired a shot and uh, sometimes it just wouldn't, it would like go through the target or it would disappear or it would hit the target and not register. And that was definitely an issue. There was also a bug at the start of the uh, tank biathlon where if you jade out, you would spawn about uh, 50 meters ahead of everybody. That was a bit of a problem. Uh, but overall, it was a nice experience. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I would love to do um, more stuff like it, and hopefully we get a similar thing next year. It was a lot of fun, and um, yeah, it was it was really nice. I, I really hope they bring that back, but maybe with just some different vehicles, and maybe some different camouflages. And the Sea Biathlon was great as well. I actually think it functioned a lot better uh, than the uh, than the the tank biathlon. There was boosts involved, uh, depending on if you completed certain objectives. You know, there was uh, the only issue with the the naval one was you could cut inside uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the markers, and that is you know a general issue, uh, especially if you're going against uh, new uh, players. But overall, I I really like this event. It was very fun. Uh, would recommend it if it ever comes back. Then we had a minor event, the 80 year anniversary of the Battle of Britain, and basically uh, this was a way that you could get yourself a new hurricane, the Mark 1L FAAM, or the Fleet Air Arms Hurricane, and once again it was just a small challenge event similar to the Operation Summer, but for one weekend only from the 14th of September to the 16th of September, and you got yourself a nice premium little hurricane with a cool skin, and yeah, this this was awesome you know i as i said before i really like little events like this and uh it would be nice to see more of them in 2021 the next event was war game strategist and this was uh probably the best theme event of the year 
um, but also it was a Build-A-Bear event once again. So the theme of the event uh, was uh, kind of likened to when you were a kid and you know you had all of these toy soldiers and you'd set them up on the battlefield and then you'd reinforce areas and then you would you know uh, siege let's say like an outpost or a pillbox and you you know you had artillery involved you had tanks involved and you kind of became the commander right well when it came to the strategist event that was all set up but in a style that it fit the workshop so overall you were able to move everything uh, as you went along and this was really cool i thought this was a, a great theme you know it was a uh, one of the one of the ones that's always brought up when it comes to general culture uh, of these uh, of these events and i thought it was just it was awesome you know it was a really really cool theme uh, the main issue as i said the same issue as the uh, last builder bear events we've had and it's the fact that you weren't able to get everything involved you were only to get half of it and not even half of it you could basically get an sd kfc 25110 and another vehicle then out of four vehicles this was not good enough uh, simple as that for me personally um i got very frustrated with this event because i thought they'd nailed the theme i thought they'd nailed the vehicles and then they just screwed it up by once again putting money over fun and um this is a problem with the Builder Bear events in general. It's, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that I don't think is going to change. Um, I think they're going to value money over, you know, uh, people actually getting the stuff, and that's that's a real issue for me. It really, really is. Um, when it comes to War Thunder, there are there are many ways to monetize the game. I don't think this one should be uh, something that's prioritized. Um, so the vehicles that were on offer the, were the Macava Mark Three D. Uh, the BI, the Lubeck F224, and the SDKFC 25110. So basically two vehicles that are interesting and have cool ideas, like the BI and then the SDKFC 25110, and then two meta vehicles, the Macava Mark 3D and the Lubeck F224. The Macava Mark 3D is a very good vehicle, you know, has access to thermals, a very good APFS DS, uh, has also good survivability, um, not as good as its other Macavas uh, because of the fact that you're facing better rounds, but generally it works incredibly well in the lineups that you can find us when it comes to America. The BI is just a rocket engine machine and even though it's really fun to play uh, especially since you can just run rings around certain opponents because of the power of the engine it's limited in many ways such as it only has a very limited amount of ammunition and also it has a limited amount of fuel so that to me is like the perfect event vehicle not something that can take over the game but a little bit of fun and that's uh, what that was the lubeck is a uh, meta defining machine uh, being very similar to a machine that uh, was in the German tech tree for a very long time which kept its repair costs just going up and up and up and up and that's because people were doing well in it and basically the Lubeck is the same way and the 25110 once again just another little fun machine uh, that was added the first 251 I believe we had in the game actually the uh, half track and now we have some more 251s or at least one more 251 right now and I'm sure in the next year we'll see more um, but yeah, a general grind event, you know, you just had to play the game, which is always nice. You didn't really have to, you know, get first places. You just had to grind along, you know, over the period of two weeks. And uh, that was good. The, the main issue with this event as well is the fact that it was announced a day before it started in classic Gaijin fashion. Hopefully in 2021, they do better uh, when it comes to announcing events, uh, especially these ones and others, you know, announce it literally the day before especially a full-on grind event probably not the best idea um, when it comes to this stuff and also at the same time um, it just it, it really really puts a sour taste in the mouth uh, the fact that you can't get a, everything I don't know how much I have to say that um, it's just uh, after after that you know the the interview with Kirill and he talked about the idea that these events are for the most dedicated players to be able to get everything it does it didn't matter how much you played this event you know you were limited it was as simple as that you were limited to how much you could get and it was force limited so therefore you could only get two of the vehicles and that to me is horrific it should not be that 
Then the next uh, one was obviously Operation Winter, the one that you're probably most familiar with that's going on right now. Another challenge event, and I think they got the vehicles, you know, pretty good on this one. You know, the Quadri Arma is a fun little machine, the EBR is great, and hopefully it means that we'll get some more Panhard EBRs next year. The K8 is probably the weakest, but it's also nice to see once again some monetary representation. And then you've also got the MiG-21 PFM, the Class 3P, and the OSS Baltimore which all offer their own little significant thing. Once again, not really happy with the high-ranking um, premiums like the MiG-21 PFM. I'm pretty sure this thing is just going to get beaten up once it comes out um, by a lot of people who want to spade their Phantoms, their Mirages, and uh, the <laughs> their other machines that are at top tier. So that's going to be really sad for it. Um, the Class 3P, I think it'll be fine, and the Baltimore will be fine. But that MiG-21 PFM is going to take a beating uh, since it doesn't have access to a ton of uh, ways of defending itself. The pin-up decals uh, that they've added, you know, a lot of them are reprints uh, basically from last year with two added ones, a Swedish and a Chinese one. I'm completely fine with this, apart from the fact that you aren't guaranteed to get the new ones. Um, you are guaranteed to get duplicates and um, you will maybe get the new ones. So far I've got the Swedish one but I haven't got the Chinese one. So basically uh, once again uh, involving the market where it isn't required you know I'm not really happy uh, with I, I think the way they should do it is they should guarantee the ones that you don't have uh, from last year uh, through the event and then once you've guaranteed them then you get duplicates I think I would be personally fine with that just as a collector same with the weapons decorations you know you can get duplicates of them which isn't very fun so that is once again a problem with these events just the duplicate nature of the extra features uh, that you can get the uh, uh, camouflage is really nice though i think generally the vehicles are good apart from the mig-21 and overall yeah it's just it's a nice event and it works really well and uh it's the the challenge events are always better than the builder bear events just because you can get everything if you dedicate enough time and then the last one of course is the new year in war thunder the uh the last of the year 23rd of december started on the 28th of december until today and uh the fact that they added in actually some new things some new mechanics that we've never seen before you know a animated uh, decorations and not just animated decorations but decorations for naval vehicles which is something that hasn't been in the game before a new aerobatic smoke which the last time we got a new aerobatic smoke was about five years ago so the fact that you know they're adding in these new ideas they're adding in new stuff it's awesome it really is and I'm very happy that um, this happened along with all the discounts and all of this it means that next year we could get some brilliant things and i'm sure we will get some brilliant things in 2021 but that was the major events of 2020 as you can see a lot of stuff jam-packed into uh, this uh, 2020 and i'm sure 2021 will be very similar war thunder grew a lot in 2020 and i don't see it stopping anytime soon when it comes to 2021 hopefully the events are good hopefully the world war mode seasons aren't too bad and hopefully the builder bear events become a little bit more fair for individuals trying to get the vehicles i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time I'd just like to thank John Ryman, Universe, Conte Baraka, Elove Goat, Trigger Hippie, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, and also Hans Fagellen, Sebastian Mizon, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.